Hey everyone, welcome back to Clutch Situation. Today I have a Pilot Mechanical Pencil for you. I haven't done a review of a Pilot Pencil in a long time. And this pencil is pretty easy to obtain, although not necessarily at retail stores. If you walk into a Target or an Office Max or another big box store looking for a Pilot Dr. Grip, you will almost always find the ballpoint pen or a rollerball variant of the Pilot Dr. Grip, but rarely are you going to find the Mechanical Pencil. I think that you can't get the Pilot Dr. Grip Mechanical Pencil at Office Max or Office Depot in the United States, but these can be a little bit difficult to come by, especially if you're interested in getting in a wide variety of colors, which ironically, the Pilot Dr. Grip comes in dozens of colors in Japan, but here in the United States, it's seen more as a mass market item, and as a result of that, it's usually only available in one or two colors. And so the Dr. Grip that I got, I got at my recent trip to Tokyo Pen Shop, and this is the Pilot Dr. Grip G spec, and I got it in 0.9 millimeter. That is a lead size that you would be hard pressed to find in most big box stores that even carry the Dr. Grip. Uh, I had not seen a Dr. Grip 0.9 millimeter until perusing Tokyo Pen Shop's website, and then of course when I visited the brick and mortar store, that was something that I had requested specifically for Kimberly to pull for me so that I could check it out myself. Because this pencil has a reputation of being one of those ergonomically designed mechanical pencils, and so that's really what I want us to focus on for this review. What makes this pencil different from other mechanical pencils out there, and really it's marketed as and it very much is the ergonomics and so let's go on a little tour of the pencil so many of these doctor grip pencils have a clear exterior body not all of them do but many of them do this one does we have a pocket clip here the key feature of this pencil is the grip, which I would define, it seems like a silicone rubber to me. It does have a little bit of give to it. I've spent a couple of weeks writing with this at school, grading with it. I specifically got it in 0.9 millimeter because I found that writing feedback on a science, on assignments for my students, I'm able to do much better with my handwriting uh, with a thicker lead size, and I usually revert, re, excuse me, I usually reserve a separate section of the paper specifically for comments, so it doesn't really matter what color that I write in, and so pencil works just as well for pen, and since I love mechanical pencils, that's what I do. Continuing the tour, the tip on the point nine is blunt enough that I would call this variant of the Dr. Grip, as is true for many mechanical pencils that come in a thicker lead size than point nine, I would call the Dr. Grip 0.9 millimeter pocket safe. It's not going to injure your pocket at all. I didn't have any experience with it injuring my pocket, and I was walking around with it in a dress shirt for weeks at a time and didn't have a problem at all. Now, one of the downsides of Pilot Mechanical Pencils in general, you can see that it's a tiny little eraser, and the eraser dock... Not too wobbly, not as wobbly as is common on a Uni Kuratoga. Uh, the Uni pencils have really wobbly eraser docks. That isn't something that they've attuned to. But Pilot, being a brand that's been around for a really, really long time, their eraser mechanism doesn't wobble so much when you erase with it. One last feature of this pencil that you should be aware of, this is a shaker pencil. And so you can give it a couple shakes and you can see that the lead has extended there. So while we're here, let's do a little bit of writing. I went ahead and loaded this thing right away because I really wanted to give it a full test drive for me. I loaded it with Pentel Einstein 2B. So this is a darker lead. Let's go ahead and run down the rating scale. writing experience. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good, even though it's not really a good for me, because I think that most people who are going to try this out, if you like an ergonomically designed grip and you don't mind a thicker grip, a lot of people are going to like the Dr. Grip. I mean, the idea behind the Dr. Grip is it's supposed to be ergonomically designed for longer writing sessions. I don't prefer thicker grips. But in writing this for many weeks, I found that it was very comfortable for me to write with. So for me, the shape of the grip and the fact that it is made of that silicone rubber did make a difference for me, despite the fact that I don't like thicker grips. And so I'm going to rate it a good on my writing experience for, for my rating scale. Um, personally, 
your mileage will vary. Okay. Um, normally I would not have as thick of a pencil as this, but I found that it was okay. Quality. We're going to give it an okay plus. I mean, it's, it's plastic. Okay. The one thing that it does have going for it in the quality department is it does ha have a brass clutch and, uh, school's about to be finished for the year. And so when school is out, I'm going to, uh, make another science oriented video, one that I've done quite a bit of research on. And that is what is it scientifically and engineering wise that makes a brass clutch better than a plastic cut clutch. And I've, I've known about it. I just needed to organize my thoughts into what's going to be a coherent video. So that's something to look forward to in the channel. And so that is something that the Dr. Grip does have going for it as that brass clutch. The good on features is really for two reasons. One, this ergonomically designed grip. I guess maybe three features because in addition to this ergonomically designed grip, the grips are apparently also interchangeable between different Dr. Grip pencils. And so if you go to Tokyo Pen Shop, which has one of the best selections of Dr. Grip pencils that I've seen online, they have dozens of Dr. Grip pencils in not only different colors, but also in different models. And one of the key overarching features for many of them is that the grips are interchangeable. They don't all have this clear silicone grip. Some of them have uh, colored grips. And so that could be something that you could interchange between pencils. So uh, it also has the shaker. And so with those things combined together, I feel like I could upgrade it from what a base pencil from B I'm going to, uh, would be. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good on that. Cost, pretty reasonable for what you get. Costs on this one is moderate. For me, it was 10 USD at Tokyo Pen Shop. And that is definitely a fair price for a pencil of this making. You might be able to save a little money on Amazon, but I'm going to tell you right now, by doing that, you're going to risk getting a non-genuine version of the product. I know for a fact that this version came straight from Japan. Uh, Kimberly and Frank ordered it from there. And so you know that you're getting a genuine product. And so that's an argument for maybe paying just a tiny bit more for a small shop. Um, so this pencil has a lot going for it, and I, and I do really like it a lot. The grip feels good to me. It has that brass clutch. It has that wide variety of color variants and interchangeable grips. There are some cons that I do want to tell you a little bit about because if I'm going to make a video on the channel about a mechanical pencil, I want to make sure that everybody is informed of things for you to watch out for if you're making a decision about this. So... In using the shaker mechanism, so not only uh, any pencil that has a shaker mechanism usually will also have a knock system on top so that you can click and the lead will extend, as you can see right there. Um, I found that in using the shaker mechanism over a couple weeks that you really got to slam the thing hard in order to get it to be effective all the time. In other words, I'm not so sure that the shaker mechanism is always effective at all times. Like I, if I give it some light shakes you can see there's hardly anything coming out. Okay, and, and maybe that's an appropriate design feature because if you're walking around with this, you don't want to extend lead. Now, if you give it a harder shake, okay, you'll get some lead. Um, I don't know what it's like to be a student in Japan or someone in an office environment. And I don't know if the a dull roar of shaking pencils is a thing in Japan. Um, I could see here in the United States how that would get really annoying, especially in a school setting. Uh, you're probably inviting some teachers commenting on the shaky nature of your pencil. Um, it wouldn't bother me in my class, but you know, obviously I can't speak for, for all teachers. Um, I, I just want students to learn, and so I'm willing to, uh, so long as it isn't disrupting the learning of other students, allow things like that. Um, other things... Uh, that you should be aware of is that smaller diameter models of lead are not going to be pocket safe. I got 0 0.9 millimeter, a much thicker lead size, so I can carry this thing around in my pocket and it isn't a problem for me. But the Dr. Grip does come in a variety of different lead sizes from 0.3 all the way up to 0.9. So for a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, even 0.7 pencil, that's not going to be pocket safe. You're not going to be able to stick it in your pocket. Um, the pocket clip plastic, pretty flimsy. I don't expect to attach this to anything other than my pocket just to have it sitting there. I would not expect it to clip it to paper. 
and one accident is going to rip the thing right off. And so there are always limitations for plastic pocket clips that basically allows you to connect it to your shirt pocket and not have any problems. But if you're planning on using it to clip to other things, that might be an issue for you. Tiny eraser. And then the other big thing that I noticed in my time that I've had the pencil is that this silicone rubber grip, which I'm sure is true of many other forms of silicone, cone rubber uh, attracts lint and dust like you wouldn't believe. I'm going to try to bring this closer up to the camera to see if we can see it. Yeah, so you can see it just attracts a ton of lint or dust. At one point, I put this into a sweatshirt and I took it off and it's just solid lint and dust. And so if that's an issue for you, that, that would be, be something that you'd want to consider for the Dr. Grip, that that silicone rubber grip. Um, and I'll talk about why this is. It has to do with the electrostatic concept of the tribal electric series. There are certain substances that are more likely to hold an electric, a static electric charge than others. I'm going to talk about that in a video coming up here on the channel. But the Dr. Grip is an example of that, that if you have a pencil or components within a pencil that are made up of certain materials, they are going to naturally electrostatically attract certain things that maybe it doesn't bother you, but maybe it would really bother you. And so I just wanted to mention that. And so this has been a long time coming on the channel. This is the Pilot Dr. Grip. This model is called the G-Spec. And I got mine in 0.9 millimeter. And so, you know, go check it out. They have a wide variety uh, available at Tokyo Pen Shop for you to purchase. And it's a great pencil. It's a great uh, balance is what I would say for a pencil that it's not super cheap like what you would find for most economy pencils in a big box store. But you can save a little bit of money on it as compared to some of the fancier mechanical pencils that are out there, some in the $16 to $18 range. And so whatever floats your boat. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll check out the Pilot Dr. Grip if it suits your taste. And thanks for watching. Feel free to like or subscribe to the channel. Remember, folks, I'm doing this for me, but if we can share our hobby, that's great. Uh, go ahead and feel free to post some comments or questions in the comments section below, and we'll keep up the discussion. Thanks for watching.